Welcome to your weekend. I'm Mike Krause from CompleteColorado.com. Filling in for John Caldera, who will be back in a couple of weeks. A little bit later in this program, we're going to talk about some common misconceptions about the U.S. Constitution. You're going to want to stick around for that. But first, Michelle C. Witten, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having All me. All right. All right. Yeah. You've been coming on the show for several years now, around yes. this time of the year, to Absolutely. talk about this big gala event you do at the Global Down Syndrome Foundation. That's correct. Right? And you run this organization. I do. And it's uh, headquartered right here in Denver, right? Yes, it That's is. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. You have a personal connection to, yes. to Down syndrome, which is, and, and so does the regular host, John Caldera. You both sure. have kids That's who have true. Down. So you've had this connection over the years where yes. you come on the show. And, and you're in luck. And for yeah. being such a regular and dedicated uh, guest on the show, we're rewarding you by doing it without John. <laughs> um, I can't do my bald jokes. You, it's no, so unfair. No I know, no. It's, it's so unfair. It's, you can't yeah. do a bald yeah. joke. It, it's funny. We were talking about it before the show. This is actually Down Syndrome Awareness Month yes, in October. Yes, and the is. colors are blue and, and yellow. yellow. Yes. You have blue yes. and yellow. Being that's a real right. man, I don't have anything that's blue and yellow, but yes. I would have worn it if yeah. I had. Great. Um, all right. So we're going to talk about this very, very cool gala event you do every year. Yes. Uh, this fashion show for sure. kids with Down Syndrome. But first, I, I kind of wanted to, if you don't mind, I'd no. like to do like a, a Down syndrome like 101 discussion because sure. I think that different people's perceptions mm -hmm. uh, and realities around Down syndrome are very different depending on how much interaction you've ever had with right. someone with Down syndrome. So right. I know three or four people who have kids with Down syndrome. Yes. But my perception is very different than yours because you have a daughter. You live yes. with someone with Down yes. syndrome. And someone who has never been around anybody would have a very, very different perception, I think. Yes. Uh, so let's do this. And, and one of the reasons I want to do this is because people might have these misconceptions. But I, I look, I mean, there's a kid uh, at the Target who works at the Target near me who wrangles carts. Yes. And he very clearly has Down syndrome. And yes. he's out working and it's honorable work. Yes. Uh, and he's doing things. And so people don't quite understand. Mm -hmm. They think that, that, that people with Downs are just not capable of certain things mm -hmm. when they in reality are. Yes, right? yes. All right, so let's, let's start with the basics. This is not a disease. This is a condition you are born with. Yes, right? it's a chromosomal condition. Chromo okay, so yes. what's happening yeah. uh, What's happening in, yeah. in the chromosomes when, when, right. when you end up with, with well, Downs? Yeah, Down. and so we're, we're supposed to be born with two copies of chromosome 21, okay. you know, and in people with Down syndrome, they're born with three copies. And it's the smallest chromosome, so it's just a little extra matter, but that little extra matter creates a very different disease spectrum and also a spectrum of ability that's slightly different than the typical population. But it is a spectrum. You know, there's, there's a whole range of abilities. And if you use IQ, which is controversial, uh, as a starting point, you know, there are even uh, a couple percent of people with Down syndrome in the typical IQ range, and then every spectrum uh, beyond that. So there's a, there's a really big variety. And just like anybody, you can't say like, typical people like, are all this way. You know, people with Down syndrome are more like their families and their own genetic makeup than that third chromosome 21. Does this just kind of happen yeah. um, like by accident or does this, yes. does this tend to run in families? Yeah, um, it's a good question. So we talk about it as a genetic condition, but by and large, it's not hereditary. Okay. So there is like a couple percent, one or two percent that where it's hereditary, where accidentally a mom or a dad have this extra chromosome 21 sticking out and it doesn't affect them, but then they pass on two by accident to their, to their child. But that's very rare. More often than not, it's just that we're misfiring, you know, during um, uh, the whole uh, biological process of um, genes separating and coming together. Um, accidentally, things misfire, and you get too little or too much of some genetic material. And in this case, um, we know that as women get older, their chances of misfiring a bit is much higher, and therefore people who are over, say, 35 are much more likely to have a kid with Down syndrome than not. But there are many more women under 35 having babies, so the real number of babies born with Down syndrome are actually born to women under 35. Does that make sense? So as a, as a real number, 
like, let's just call it 200, they're being born in under 35. But over 35, maybe 60 are being born, so it's a lot less, but as a percentage of those parents being pregnant, it's a big number because there's just not as many women getting pregnant after 35. All right. you, tell, you mentioned the word spectrum. Yeah, and there seems yeah. to be a pretty broad spectrum yeah. because I know that there are, there are people with Down syndrome uh, at one end of the spectrum who, mm -hmm. who are essentially going to need care their entire lives mm -hmm. and they're going to need someone to care for them and mm -hmm. also someone to advocate for them or to make basic decisions about mm -hmm. life for them. But sure. on the other hand, and we've seen this over the last couple of years, there's yep. been a strong push. Sure. In fact, I even remember seeing a, a, yeah. a young man testify in front of Congress sure. uh, on this. Yeah, our guy. Our, your guy. Frank Stevens. To, yeah. to say, hey, look, we're, we want some autonomy yes. because we're we fall on the spectrum where we're able to make decisions about our own lives. Yes. And we're not just mm -hmm. asking for it. Yeah. We're going to demand it. Yeah. And so you have people who are getting married and yeah. having careers and Absolutely. buying houses and just doing yeah. stuff, right? Absolutely. You know, I think for us, you know, when we started the Global Down Syndrome Foundation, there are a lot of great Down Syndrome organizations or intellectual and developmental disability organizations. Nobody was focusing on research and medical care. And yet, Without good health, you can't reach your potential. And we really identified as good health was keeping people from reaching their potential, people with Down syndrome. And that's why we focus in this area. And so you look at longevity. In the 1980s, the average lifespan was 28 years old. Today it's 60. Why did that happen? Because we're giving them appropriate medical care. And in pediatrics, that's great. In adult care, it's not good at all. And we don't even have medical care guidelines for adults. The idea was like, oh, they're gonna die early, who cares? Right, right, well, right. you don't put resources but, into yeah, that kind exactly, of thing, Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. There also was a terrible um, kind of um, assumption that like, hey, earlier better detection is gonna solve this problem. So we're not gonna invest in this population. And that has not panned out at all. We always love to bring up the fact that when you have a doubling of the population and a live birth increase from 2002, it was about one in 1200, to today it's one in 691. More live births, really? doubling of lifespan. We have a population explosion of people with Down syndrome That's in the really United States. So of course, as they're getting older and we stand on the shoulders of the 60s and 70s human and civil rights activists, our kids are included in school. They have access to medical care. We are improving through our personal work at Global the kind of medical care they get. They're living longer. Of course, now they're able to get a job. Now they're able to live independently or semi-independently simply because we gave them access to basic health care and opportunity. But now there's a lot more that needs to be done. Yeah. That's, okay, so yeah. so um, yeah. and this is called in 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 yeah. in this world you, you would be a um, I mean I call it autonomy where you're mm -hmm. just basically you're an autonomous you're an autonomous yeah. person yeah, you we get to say make basic independent independent semi independent semi independent yes you blew my mind before while we were talking before yes. the show because I mentioned the peanut butter falcon yes absolutely and and, and this has to do with the mainstreaming sure. of Down syndrome because yes. down, kids with Downs go to regular schools with yes. regular kids now mm -hmm. whereas there was another era they would have been in what were called special schools yes. or not in school at all. Not right? in school at all. all yeah. right. So there's been this strong push towards mainstreaming mm -hmm. or, or at least or, or, inclusion. Or, or, we inclusion. We call it inclusion. inclusion. Yeah. 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 And it seems to me like um, politics is a lagging indicator of the culture. Yeah. Culture drives politics in yes, this country. Yes, it does. It does. And we just saw a major motion picture come out yeah. with a the star of the show yes. being a young man with Down syndrome. And yes. I did not know this. You all made that happen over at the Global Absolutely. Down Syndrome Foundation. Yeah, Tell us good. about that. We didn't make it happen. We oh, were an executive. I, I think you get to take all we, the credit for it, We were it, an Michelle. executive producer. You know, we helped screen it before it went into post-production. Um, but we're huge supporters. And we helped get it out into those first 17 screens. Zach Gotzigan is the uh, first actor. This is actor. the young man. This is the he's, young man. Yeah. He's the star. And Shia LaBeouf, Dakota Johnson, his actors that were with him, his, 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 his colleagues, they all bonded. It's amazing. And now there's Oscar buzz for Zach, the first actor with Down syndrome to get Oscar buzz. Uh, and it's the number one grossing independent film 
for the year in the United States. So we're very proud of the film. We're very proud of Zach and all of the people involved, the writer and director who wrote it for Zach made this happen. So uh, kudos to them. And they're coming to the fashion show. And I should say Quincy Jones is coming this year. Ooh. He gives the Quincy Jones Exceptional Advocacy Award when he can come. He's coming this year. Last year it was Zach. This year it's Megan Baumgart's four Emmys on Born This Way. Uh, she's amazing. And then the top model, Amanda Booth. And then we have Terrell Davis. We have Eric Dane. We have Laura Linney. We have Henry Winkler. Um, we have John C. McGinley. Excited. We have a, a roster of great celebrities. And, and most of these people yeah. have some kind of connection. They're, they yes. have a family member. A lot of them. Jamie Foxx, for example, ha his sister Deandra. But she's a star in her own right. And then John C. McGinley has a son with Down syndrome. You know, and the list goes on. And in some, in some ways, a lot of our uh, people are touched either by somebody who's differently abled right. in their families. Like Colin um, uh, uh, Farrell last year was, uh, okay. has a son with Angelman syndrome. Yeah. Okay. So actually, and one of the things that's coming up here is you do this every year is this, this yes. be, be yourself, be beautiful. It's actually a fashion show. And I think yes. we have pictures. So yes. we're going to show some pics of, uh, yeah. this is fantastic, by the way. I mean, Thank this you. is the real deal. Yes, it's the right? real deal because the people we serve are front and center of the event. And, you know, it's 1,400 people strong, about 250 people fly from out of state into state to be a part of it and uh, support it. And, uh, but, you know, it's the funding. You know, people right. might say, oh my gosh, you, you raise over two million for this event. We're well, I raising. I think that goes back out the door pretty quick, though. Right. It all, the money goes to research and medical care to hire. We have 14 full time equivalents at the C Center for Down Syndrome at Children's Hospital, Colorado, providing care, excellent care, to 1,800 unique patients from 28 states and 10 countries. Those 14 experts, I mean, that gobbles up like 10 times that money, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, right? So it's like, we have our work to do. We have our work cut out for us. But I think with our work in D.C. and with the NIH, now we've tripled the budget just in the last two years, um, and three years, including next year, um, for research benefiting people with Down syndrome. That had never been done. 20 years of flat and defunding of Down syndrome research. And we've reversed it. And it will elongate life and it will improve health outcomes. And you're going to see 10 more Zacks. <laughs> right. And 10 right. more peanut butter falcons. So, so, yeah. so the fashion yeah. show, Be Beautiful, Be Yourself. Yes, Did I yes. get that right? Is it the other way around? Be Beautiful, Be Yourself. Be Beautiful, Be Yourself. Absolutely. Tell wh when and where. Okay, it's Saturday, November 2nd uh -huh. at the Sheraton Downtown Hotel. And it's at like 5 o'clock, and you can still get tickets. You can still sponsor a model. Like, we try and get oh, all the models to be sponsored. We still have three models okay. that need to be sponsored. So please sponsor our models. I think that's great. Um, Great dinner, great auction. There's an after party with singing from the DeVos, um, who are friends with uh, Jamie Foxx and his family that are flying out for this. It's going to be a real wonderful evening celebrating people with Down syndrome. Fantastic. And I believe we've yeah. flashed the, uh, mm -hmm. the website for the bit. If it's not, yeah. it's BeBeautifulBeYourself.org.org. Yes. Right? Uh, yes. BeBeautifulBeYourself.org. Right. Michelle, yeah. Michelle, thank you very much. As yes. always, it's a pleasure to have you on. I love the blue and the yellow. Thank you. And congrats on uh, the Peanut Butter Falcon, which yes. is just... Just hilarious name in and of itself. Yeah, and we're happy you. to have you on again. Thank All you right. so much. And yeah. stick around. We'll be right back.